Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it and give this video a like. Podcast below in the description. Check it out. How about geology.com slash ham, John? Get your you... skincare regimen locked in. <laughs> Did you get your face wash on today, Guy? Face wash, vital morning cream. Got my repairing night cream last night. <laughs> you go to the website. You type in your needs. They calculate it for you. 40% How off. sweet are these little bottles? Yeah, check it out. 40% off. All right, John. How about what Matt Barrows wrote in The Athletic? 49ers are close with Justin Fields, QB coach, who now works with Trey Lance. The Niners, you talk about having the inside track. John Beck, Shanahan's former quarterback at Washington, was a backup there, have remained close. Beck is now the private quarterback for Fields and all of a sudden for Trey Lance. I mean, this is as good as inside information as you can get. Yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable. I, I did not know the extent of John Beck's work for Kyle. How about throwing in that he's been training C.J. Beathard, Nick Mullins, and Jimmy Garoppolo the last couple of years? Incredible. Obviously, he's played for Kyle. I, I was earlier this morning, Peter King had him on the pod and was just talking about, you know, he understands the offense. He understands what they ask for. And I, I don't think it's nothing that three weeks ago, someone slid into my DMs before I even clicked on the article that said, did you know that the Shanahan's, the Shanahan's, told uh, Trey Lance to go over to John Beck and start working with him. And obviously Justin Fields already was. I, I don't think it's ain't not nothing that both these guys are working with the guy uh, in part of three weeks ago is what? Kyle had nothing to hide. Now, I don't know if that means one way or the other because I, I've been hearing more Justin Fields buzz than the Trey Lance statement that we made a couple of days ago. But I, I think it's pretty clear that their sights are set on uh, – on one of the two in that duo, would you agree at this point? Like yes. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not completely off the Mac, but I, my, my pie chart is diminishes by the day on the Mac, on the Mac Jones. I think this tells us a ton. I think the one piece of information it might change for us because we have we have not been. If, if you've been watching us or listening to us, you know that we have not. We've been saying for a while we don't think he's drafting Mac. But the idea that he knew who he was going to take when he moved up to three, maybe he's maybe he just felt like one of these two guys I can really I can get on board with one of these two. It's just a matter of now figuring out which. Maybe, you know, that would be the one thing we could debate whether or not he absolutely knew. But um, I still think you can make the case that he did. But it this to me feels like such a scouting hack. Cause you always say, What's the one thing you really don't know? You can watch the tape, you can check the stats, you can talk to people you don't know what the guy is like to work with until you get him on the field and you probably form an opinion after your first OTA. Like, what was this like? This to me is like the NFL equivalent of hiring the number one prospects dad on your college basketball staff. Like Agreed. this is this level of insight. I, you said this to me before we started recording. I've been thinking it too. I would be, if I was the GM of another team, I'd be like, wait a second. Can I be pissed about this? Cause this, this seems kind of crazy to me. But it's for I give full credit to Kyle. Yeah, well, you know who also benefits off this is obviously John Beck's a BYU guy, but he's been training Zach Wilson. Well, who do you think has a relationship through the 49ers now with John Beck? Obviously, LaFleur, who's wish Robert Sala in uh, you know, in New York. Yeah. The LaFleurs, you know, were part of Washington, at least his brother was, when John Beck was there as a player. Now you get in a situation where LaFleur, I'm sure, Mike LaFleur who is it Michael yeah Matt yeah. LaFleur Mike LaFleur Mike LaFleur so gets the inside information on Zach Wilson and the Niners are getting the inside information on Trey Lance and Justin Fields so this it benefits those uh, Joe Douglas ain't complaining no and I, I I do think that this in a year it's always going to be important but in a year where Kyle and John couldn't get a private workout with Justin Fields because of the rules and not take him out to dinner and spend a day with them and then one of the top 30 visits fly him out I think it's a bigger deal this year than just your average year. Like I bet it benefited the Niners maybe the last couple of years when the mandatory, you know, or when the OTAs didn't exist and you send Jimmy to go work out with him. Right. And just, yep. he runs the practice. So it's, it's a piece of information that I know me and you didn't quite, I, I didn't know. Credit I mean, to Barrows for right. I mean, it's, it's, it's significant, right? I would call this significant information. Big time. Um, and I, I also think that, you know, now what I'm about to say, I don't know if I would call this significant information, but it's just information. You know, you think about the Niners draft picks in the first round, some of their draft picks. What was one of the stories on Solomon Thomas? I mean, they really they I wonder if a tie went to Solomon because John Lynch felt like he really knew him. 
They drafted Brandon Ayuk. Well, a lot was made about the relationship that John Lynch had with Herm Edwards, that Herm, I think, would absolutely tell Lynch the truth. If this was not a guy he thought he should draft from a personality standpoint, he would give him the real information. Uh, the information on the individual really matters to this team. Now, does it matter? You would know better. Does it matter more to them than anybody else? Probably not. But I just think we have some examples here of them drafting players that they really do think they know a lot about in terms of the person. Well, one thing we know for a fact now, you could argue, Middlecoff, who are they going to take? They had the second overall pick. They took the best player non-quarterback in that draft in Nick Bosa who was widely considered by everyone that was not a polarizing, crazy decision. That was, I think, viewed by NFL circles, the no-brainer decision. Steve Kime even went on record like part of the Rosen-Kyler trade. He felt good about doing it, but it was hard passing on Nick Bosa. Like He was universally thought of as an elite player. But w- whenever you draft a player, even if he's a can't miss, you're still doing a lot of work on him through the program, right? right. They have to feel pretty comfortable about the information that they got out of Ohio State, right? Ryan Day and his crew. Yeah, isn't so, there a must champ connection too? Or is it just that a- was Debo that was Debo Samuel. Did he told him about right, Mu- must champ told him a Debo and then Javon Kinlaw. Javon Kinlaw. Yeah. So again, we've got some pattern here. Other teams want to know as much as possible too. I'm sure they all do. But I just the Niners do go They rely they rely on it, it feels like, or at least are more candid about telling you about it. Yeah. So maybe it's not different than anybody else, but at least we we, we can confirm that this is something that- they just out their sources. They're like, Muschamp told us about Debo. We love Debo. Then he said Kinlaw, and we went all in. Well, do you agree? Here, here's a – I think you brought this up to me. If the Niners were still drafting at 12th, I don't think we'd know this. In, like, I don't think this would be – I don't think this whole – I don't think Beck is talking to Barrows, right? Absolutely on the record. On the no, absolutely no chance. And this is the other area where, you know, we talked the other day, and by the time we were done talking about it, Several other teams got added to the Fields Pro Day, but it still was only ended up being like six or seven, right? But the Falcons were the next team in. The Panthers were the next team in. Broncos. Broncos. Uh, Maybe I just convinced myself based on the theory, but the Patriots and the Niners, the Patriots can do whatever they want right now. Excuse me, the Niners can do whatever they want. Is there a Falcons drafting at four Patriots? I got got one for you. One thing I heard from the little birdie, is that the Broncos are sniffing around on Jimmy. And what did we say yesterday on the podcast? That because of no combine, these pro days, and this one specifically feels a little bit like a business meeting, right? We did another video on fields. Like, yeah, he can run and throw. We knew that. Is it more Belichick, Kyle, Lynch, uh, General Patton now from Denver, Atlanta? I don't think it was an accident that Atlanta suddenly showed up at this pro day. Are there a lot of moving parts here with these teams that could just— yeah, I definitely thought that when it was just Bill and the Niners, and then the Falcons were the next team. Like, but then the Broncos got added, and then the Bron- I heard Jimmy yes. and the Broncos. Could this be a business convention? This is like that, uh, like one of those conventions where all the like the CEOs from like the top twenty companies end up in the woods somewhere, and in, in, in like Chico, and they have some thing that they, you know, it's like a million dollars to, you know, something that uh, Axe would go to on billions, like just some yeah. powwow. Of but it's Belichick, the Lynch, control the world. Arthur Smith, General Patton. He's, he's, you could make the case. This is like a United Nations meeting of uh, quarterback I, drafting teams. Of the National Football League. I love I love this article. I mean, there was so much here. So much here. It's good good job, Barrels, getting getting us that information. Good job. We're gonna John have to Beck. get uh we're gonna have to get John Beck on the YouTube channel sometime over uh over the summer. Yeah, I've been texting people asking if anyone knows John Beck. I've yet to hit on that, but uh anyone hit us I, in our DMs. I think we can I can we can track him down. 